So dear guys, let's start reading the 11th question. Question number 11. Draft balance sheet of three companies as on 31st March 2012 is as below. Read through. There's a share capital, reserve and a PNL as on 1st April 2011 and also a profit of 2011-12 given separately. That is a profit for the current year. So profit at the beginning of the year and profit for the current year has been given in two lines. There's a loan from Morning Limited for 5,000. Investment of 1,60,000 shares in evening, 75,000 shares in night. Both are held by Morning Limited. It is not a chain holding, it is multiple subsidiaries. Loan to Evening Limited 5,000 rupees and sundry assets are given to you. Dividend proposed by each company at the rate of 10%. Stock transferred by Night Limited to Evening Limited. Fully paid <coughs> stock transfer from Night Limited to Evening Limited. Fully paid was 8 lakhs on which the former made a profit of 3 lakhs. On 31st March 2012, this inventory was this was in the inventory of the later. Loan referred to above was against 8% interest. Neither Morning Limited nor Evening Limited considered the amount of interest. Reserve on 1-4-2011 for evening and night was 8 lakh and 7 lakh 50 thousand. The shares of the subsidiary were all acquired by Morning Limited on 1st April 2011. Prepare a consolidated balance sheet as on 31st March 2012. All workings forming part of your answer. Yes guys, so we are talking about multiple subsidiaries having some adjustments here. Come to the adjustment number A. Dividend is proposed by each company at 10%. That means every company at the closing has been proposing 10% dividend. We will consider that. Next, stock transferred by Night Limited to Evening Limited was 8 lakhs on which the former made a profit of 3 lakhs. Who made the profit? Night Limited made the profit. So we have to <clears throat> Take the adjustment when we are analyzing the reserves. Loan referred to above was at 8% interest, but no one has actually considered the interest. Who gave the loan? The loan is given by morning to evening. So it is an interest expense for evening and interest income for morning, which is not considered, which we will consider now. Yep, the reserves are given to you. Reserves on 1-4-2011, that is the opening reserves of 8 lakhs and 7 lakh 50 thousand. All figures are given in thousands, so we'll reduce them to thousands and we'll take it. And the date of acquisition is also 1st April. Now, come, let's try to simplify the dividend adjustment. What happens whenever we have dividend adjustment? So, every company's profit should be reduced and we have to start allocating it to holding and minority interest. For suppose, let's say, There is a subsidiary company S and the subsidiary had a P&L of 100. Let's say the dividend was 40 and H holds in S percentage of 60. So what happens to the extent of this dividend? I will say that 24 belongs to holding company H and 16 belongs to minority interest. Let's say this particular dividend is a post acquisition dividend. That was the adjustment in the current, in the current problem. If you observe, they are proposing 10% dividend for the current year. My date of acquisition was 1st April. So the entire dividend is post acquisition dividend. What will we do with the post acquisition dividend? Holding portion of post acquisition dividend, we will take it to reserves for CBS. Saying that it is current year income for us. Minority interest, we have to add it to minority interest. Okay. So if we logically talk about in we are reserves for CBS we are adding 24 and for minority we are adding 16. While we are analyzing the reserves how do we analyze the reserves? 100 rupees PNL. Let's say entire thing is post acquisition only.
out of this 40 rupees is given as dividend 60 rupees is post acquisition reserves this 60 rupees of post acquisition reserves again i'll take it to holding and minority interest and i'll say out of this 60 percent 36 40 percent 24 these are the shares of holding and minority interest holding company share of post acquisition reserve should be taken to reserves for cbs And minority interest 24 will consider it and will add to minority interest. Now if you carefully observe your minority interest and reserves for CBS, your minority interest will add it like this. Share in post acquisition reserves. What is the share in post acquisition reserve? After the dividend his share is 24. And their share in proposed dividend sixteen. The total addition comes up to forty. Come to the holding company reserves for CBS. In your reserves for CBS, also we write the same thing. Post acquisition reserves. 36 and the value of proposed dividend is dividend proposed by subsidiary is dividend receivable for holding so his share of proposed dividend is 24 that is 16 observe one thing carefully even if I wouldn't have provided the dividend even if I did not provide this deduction of 640 here what I would have done this 100 would have been split directly into holding is equal to 60 and minority is equal to 40. Correct? Observe. After providing dividend also, what we have added to minority is 40. What we have added to reserves for CBS is 60. So, if you understand simple logic, what I am trying to prove is, even if you provide a dividend or even if you don't provide a dividend, ultimately your consolidated balance sheet will not get affected at all. Provided only if the dividend has been paid out of post acquisition reserve. If the dividend is paid out of post acquisition reserve, then I don't have to provide it for the subsidiary. Should I provide it for the holding? Compulsory. If the holding company is proposing the dividend, compulsory you have to provide. But as far as the subsidiary is concerned, I don't have to consider the dividend adjustment if, if and only if I am saying that such a dividend is paid out of post acquisition reserves. Now, what if there is a pre-acquisition dividend in this? Can I do the same thing? Not possible. The reason is, minority interest will not change. A share in the proposed dividend always be added to minority. But if this is a pre-acquisition dividend, this 24 wouldn't have appeared in reserves for CBS. We'll, we'll take that directly to cost of control. So this wouldn't have been there here. So your reserves for CBS will be 36. And in your cost of investment, I'll reduce 24 there. So that is not possible. So, this adjustment is possible or we can ignore the adjustment for dividend if such dividend is paid out of post acquisition reserves. So, just write that adjustment. If the dividend is declared by subsidiary, Out of post acquisition reserves, the adjustment for proposed dividend. In analysis of reserves, that is step 3, can be ignored. Guys, pakha only if the dividend is paid out of post acquisition reserves, then I can say it can be ignored. 
if it is a pre acquisition dividend i cannot ignore that take down the adjustment as well as the example Yes guys, so let's get into that <coughs> question number 11 and start solving. Start with the date of acquisition. Date of acquisition is given in point number F.
डेट ऑफ एक्विजिशन गाइस फर्स्ट अप्रैल 2011 शेयर होल्डिंग पैटर्न नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स हेल्ड एंड परसेंटेज होल्डिंग Evening Limited, held by Morning and Minority Interest. Night Limited, also same way, held by Morning and Minority Interest. Hundred percent shareholding in evening. The total number of shares in evening. I'm writing everything in thousand. Is two hundred. Two hundred. How many shares did this fellow hold? This fellow holds one lakh sixty thousand shares. One sixty shares. Writing everything in thousands. So remaining forty are held by minority. This is eighty twenty. Come to the night limited. Hundred percent shareholding. Number of shares in night limited are hundred. In thousands, if you are writing, each share is hundred rupees. So hundred of two lakhs, hundred shares. Hundred shares of which seventy five are held by morning, twenty five are held by minority. Shareholding pattern is seventy five twenty five. Now. I don't need to analyze general reserve because I know directly the closing general reserve and the opening general reserve with no adjustment directly. I'll put the reserves in the distribution table as pre-acquisition and post-acquisition. What is important for us to do is the P&L part. Analysis of reserves of subsidiary. With respect to date of acquisition, you can consider any subsidiary, guys. First, let me start with Evening Limited. This is not a chain holding, guys. If it was a chain holding, compulsory the indirect subsidiary should be the first one. But here I can start with Evening. Check Evening Limited P and L. Evening Limited P and L. As on 1st April 2011 was 2000. As on for for 2011-12 the profit was 3800. The total is 5800 P&L. So evening limited balance for the P&L balance as on 31st March 2012. Five thousand eight hundred, splitting into two parts. Balance was on first April two thousand eleven. My first April two thousand eleven balance in evening is two thousand. With my current year profits, he himself has given the current year profits as three thousand eight hundred. Check for the adjustments now. Evening limited. Adjustment in the first case. Point number B. No, point number B. Night limited made the profit, so point number B I'll consider for night. Point number C. Loan referred, that is loan from morning limited for five thousand, which was there on the liability side of evening, at is carrying an interest of eight percent, but neither morning nor evening considered the interest. Now there could be a doubt saying that, anyways you consolidate. So either you deduct dividend here, you deduct the amount of interest here, and again add it to the morning limited. What difference does it make? It makes a lot of difference. The simple reason is evening limited reserve 100% I'm not taking. 100% I don't take. How much am I taking in evening limited? 
holding company has only 80% share. So if I deduct that amount of interest from here, that means 80% of the deduction will be taken by morning and 20% of the deduction will be taken by minority. When you add it directly to the holding company reserve, the entire interest will be taken as income. Got it? So that is the reason why compulsory you have to deduct the amount of interest 8% on 5000 for one year. Four hundred rupees is the amount of interest, and three thousand four hundred is the balance. I am not giving the deduction for dividend because we have just seen that the dividend need not be adjusted. Dividend need not be adjusted at all. That was the only adjustment there. So two thousand, I'll call it as pre-acquisition reserve, and three thousand four hundred, I'll call it as post-acquisition reserve. Same way prepare for night limited as well. P and L of night. Balance as on 31st March 2012. Night limited P and L. Opening was 800. Current year profit was 1800. This is 2600. Balance as on 1 4 2011 is 800 with my current year profits being 1800. One adjustment in the point number B. Your point number B says that stock transfer from night to ho night to evening was 8 lakhs of which the former made a profit of 3 lakhs. So the profit is 3 lakhs in thousands I will write it as 300. Entire stock was there in the closing stock guys. Unrealized profit on stock. This will be 1500. 800 is pre-acquisition. 1500 is post-acquisition. With that we come to the end of the analysis. Only two proper adjustments were there. So there is no pre-acquisition dividend, nothing. Two adjustments that is sufficient. So let's start the next one that is distribution. My distribution of reserves first let me distribute for evening limited pre acquisition and post acquisition under post acquisition again I have two columns one in column is reserve other column is PNL. Check the general reserve. General reserve for evening limited in the balance sheet shows a balance of 1000 rupees on 31st March 2012. Come down below for the reserves and point number D. Reserves on 1-4-2011 that is the opening of the year. Evening limited had 800 in thousands and night limited had 750 in thousands. So opening was 800, closing is 1000. That means current year is 200. Reserves 800 existing on the date of acquisition, pre acquisition, 200 later on post acquisition. Come to the PNL. PNL we just analyzed for evening. 2000 rupees is pre acquisition and 3400 is post acquisition.
3400 distributed between holding and minority that is morning and minority in 80 is to 20. Morning 80%, minority interest 20%. Check the distributions. Night Limited also I'll have a reserve and have a PNL. Opening and Night Limited was 750 given in point number D. But what was the closing reserve? Closing reserve in the balance sheet is 900. So if 750 existed on the date of acquisition called as pre. 150 was accumulated later, later that is post and my analysis of reserves showed 800 rupees as pre-acquisition and 1500 as post-acquisition. Morning 75, minority Check your distributions guys, distribution should be accurate. Yes guys, then go for cost of control. I'll need two columns here. Morning and evening and morning and night. Start with your cost of investment. Check the balance sheet on the asset side. Cost of investment is 18,000 and 8,000. There is no dividend adjustment. So share in net assets on the date of acquisition. Share in net assets on date of acquisition should be split between share capital and Pre-acquisition reserve. Share capital. Check your share holding pattern. Each share is 100 rupees. So 160 shares morning holds in evening. That should give me a share capital of 16,000. Here 75. Each share is 100. 7,500. My pre-acquisition reserves are 2240, 1120, 1160.5. 1240 and 8662.5. Both cases I am getting a capital reserve. That is 240 and 
combining both my capital reserve is 902.5 I'll combine both to get a capital reserve of 902.5 which will be presented in the consolidated balance sheet Minority interest will represent minority share in the net assets of the company. So, which should be represented by share capital and reserves. Under reserves, we have pre-acquisition reserve as well as post-acquisition reserves. Under post-acquisition reserve, again I have a reserve and a PNL. And this total is what we need. Keep posting the months, but we need two columns. One is in the evening column and in night column. Check the share capital. Each share is 100 rupees. In evening he has 40 shares. Share capital is 4000. And in night he has 25 shares, 2500. So 4000 and 2500. Reserves directly you can pick up in evening limited. 560, 40 and 680. 560, 40, 680. Night 387.5, 37.5 and 375. 387.5, 37.5, 375. There is 3300. Combined basis we get 8580. Minority interest on a combined basis is 8580. Proposed dividend adjustment holding company. Compulsory you have to provide. Subsidiary you don't have to provide only if it is out of post acquisition reserves. But here compulsory I have to do for the holding company share. Balance in the balance sheet of Morning Limited. Morning Limited reserve is 1800. PNL is a combined figure. Opening is 15. Current year profit is 7000. So total PNL is 8500. So 1800 and 8500. Add a share in post acquisition reserves. Share in post acquisition reserves of evening, is sharing post acquisition reserves of night, evening 160 2720, night 112.5. And 1,125. One final adjustment to be given is proposed dividend. He is proposing 10% dividend according to the first adjustment. 10% of morning limited share capital 40,000 is 4,000.
Oh yeah, interest adjustment, absolutely. Interest is an income for him. So interest from evening, I don't have to calculate. Whatever you have deducted there should be an income for him. Add that 400 rupees. I've deducted that 400 there. We are adding it back here. This is 2072.5. I think this is 855. Yes guys, complete the balance sheet guys. Consolidated balance sheet of Morning Limited. As on 31st March 2012. Start with equity and liabilities.
under that shareholder funds under shareholder funds share capital check what is the share capital of morning 40000 next one is reserves and surplus first reserve is a capital reserve which we have identified in cost of control check your step 5 cost of control 902.5 remaining two reserves one is a reserve other one is a PNL this one check your step 7 Reserves for CBS is 2072.5 and 8745. Next liability is minority interest. That is step 6. 8580. Non current liabilities there's no loan, nothing for the non current liabilities. So we have only current liabilities that is credit us. Credit as value, total it is 4900 and one more liability is proposed dividend. We have proposed 4000 rupees of dividend. Assets non current assets under that tangible fixed assets. Check the figure of tangible fixed assets. There's no tangible fixed assets, there's only sundry assets you can directly total it. 21,800, 32,800 and 14,900. 69,500. But that 69,500 we have an adjustment as well guys. The total of the asset is 69,500 but we have unrealized profit. How much was the unrealized profit? Unrealized profit in point number B is 300. So unrealized profit should reduce the asset. So it should be 69,200. There's only one asset. That's it. Check the liability side total. Liability side total should be 69,200.
Yes, guys, so let's start the 12th question. Prepare the consolidated balance sheet on December 31st, 2011 of the group company A, B and C. Summarized balance sheet as on that date are given to you. As balance sheet given to you with the intercompany balances are also there. Come to the asset, the investments, A limited holds in B, B limited holds in C, A does not hold in C. So, a chain holding. Check the intercompany owings. The intercompany owings on the liability side, A limited in B limited's balance sheet liability side is 7000. So, there should be B limited in A limited's balance sheet asset side for 7000. Check B limited in A limited balance sheet asset side is 8000. That 1000 extra will write it as cash in transit. A limited balance sheet, C limited shows on the liability side 3300. So in the C limited balance sheet, asset side A limited should show 3300. Perfect. It tallies, you can cancel that. So 1000 rupees of cash in transit arises from intercompany transactions or intercompany owings. A limited holds 750 shares of B and B holds 400 shares of C. These holdings were acquired on 30th June 2011. Balance sheet date 31st December 2011. That means exactly after 6 months. On 1st Jan the balances are given to you for reserve and PL. And there is an adjustment for C Limited saying that C Limited sold goods costing 2500 to B Limited for 3100 and these goods remain unsold. So unrealized profit for C Limited is 600. Because it was sold by C Limited. C Limited sold goods of 2500 to B Limited for 3100. So, with this sufficient information, you can start solving that. So, go with the flow, date of acquisition, shareholding pattern, and then analysis. Date of acquisition, 1st first June, 30th June, 30th June 2011. Shareholding pattern, Number of shares held and percentage of holding. Two subsidiaries. The first one let's talk about B Limited. That is a direct subsidiary held by A Limited. And minority interest. Then we have an indirect subsidiary C Limited. Held by the subsidiary B Limited and minority interest. Check number of shares in B Limited. It's one lakh. One lakh shares of hundred rupees each. The total number of shares in B Limited are thousand. Of which point number one, A Limited holds seven fifty shares. Two fifty held by minority. Share holding pattern is seventy five twenty five. C Limited. 60,000 share capital, 100 rupees each, number of shares, 600. B holds, 400 shares. 400 and 200. I cannot find out ratio perfectly, so this one, percentage perfectly, so I'll write it as 2 by 3, 1 by 3. It's actually 66.67 and 33.33. It's a bar, so I'm... Difficult to do it, so I'll do it this way. 
Now, question arises, do I need analysis or no? Let's see for the reserves. First, always for the indirect subsidiary C. Check for the indirect subsidiary C. What is the reserve? Balance sheet reserve is 7200. What is the reserve given in the uh, on 1st Jan in point number 2? 6000. So, what is current year appropriation? 1200. Out of 1200, its date of acquisition is 30th June. That means 600 is pre acquisition, 600 is post acquisition. So, this 6000 appearing on 1st Jan, that is also pre. Plus 600 rupees up to 30th June is also pre. Total pre acquisition is 6600 and total post acquisition is 600. You don't have to do, but if you are not having sufficient clarity, then try to solve. Analysis of reserves of subsidiary with respect to date of acquisition. Guys, wherever it is not required, try not to waste your time solving your analysis of reserves. If you can find out directly, go for the distribution table. First, the indirect subsidiary C limited. First is a reserve. Balance as on 31st December 2011, 7200. Balance as on 1st Jan 2011, 6000. Current year appropriation is 1200. His date of acquisition is exactly on 30th June after 6 months. So up to 30th June 600. So from 30th June to 31st December 600. 600 is post acquisition directly. This 6000 plus 600, 6600 is pre acquisition. For this, I don't need analysis. We can directly write the figures. We can directly write the figures. But PNL we have to solve because there is an adjustment in PNL. Balance as on 31st December 2011. PNL balance as on 31st December 2011 is 5000. Out of this balance as on 1st Jan 2011, given in the table below that, C limited PNL was 1000. So my current year profit is. 4000 out of this 4000 reduce the amount of unrealized profit unrealized profit on stock is 600 3400 2,500 goods are sold for 3,100, 600 rupees profit. This adjustment, if it is provided this way, is absolutely wrong. Now the question arises, why wrong? There is this current year profit out of which when I am deducting the amount of pre-acquisition profits, Pre-acquisition profits in the sense I am talking about intercompany transaction. Intercompany transactions should be considered as an adjustment only after the date of acquisition. That means this 600 rupees of a profit was earned only after 30th June that is his date of acquisition not for the entire year. Because if I do like this I will split it as 1700 and 1700 pre-acquisition and post-acquisition absolutely wrong. 
So what we do here is we first split this to the 4000. Up to 30th June 2000. From 30th June to 31st December. This is again 2000. From here we will say. Unrealized profit on stock. This is 600 here. Will give me 1400. And this total will give me 3000. 3000 being pre acquisition, 1400 being post acquisition. If I would have solved it in the previous method, I'll get 2700 and 1700, which is absolutely wrong. Guys, there's no adjustment to the reserves of B limited at all, so we can directly go for the distribution table. This is 6600 pre, 600 post. P and L. 3000 pre. 1400 post. 9600, 600 and 1400. Should be split between. B limited 2 by 3, minority interest 1 by 3, 6400 and 3200, this is 400 and 200, this is 933 and Go for the distribution for B limited. PNL and the last one do not forget B share in post acquisition reserves of C this you don't forget check first one the reserve B limited reserve what is the balance sheet reserve 10,000 what was the balance at the beginning of the year? 8,000. So what is current year appropriation? 2,000. So up to 30th June appropriation is 1,000 which is also pre along with this 8,000. So my total pre-acquisition reserve is 9,000 and appropriation after 30th June 1,000 rupees is post. There is no adjustment to P&L. Check P&L. P&L in the balance sheet of B limited is 4,000. Now out of that 4000 opening opening P&L is 1000. So current year P&L is 3000. So out of current year P&L of 3000, 1500 is pre-acquisition and 1500 is post-acquisition. So it's 4000 of P&L I can write it like this. 2500 We share in the post acquisition reserves of C Limited 
A is 75, minority interest 25. Check the distribution. The distribution is is right. Then the remaining question is very simple, guys.
Yes, guys, two cost of controls. One is A and B. Other one is B and C. No dividend adjustment, guys. Just that cost of investment. Check the balance sheet. Cost of investment, 85,000 and 53,000. A and B 85, B and C 53. Compare this with share in net assets. Share capital and pre-acquisition reserves. Share capital. A and B. 750 shares. Each share is 100 rupees. 75,000. 400 shares. Each share is 100 rupees. 40,000. A and B pre-acquisition is 8625. B and C pre-acquisition is 6400. This is 83,625 and 46,400. Both cases I have goodwill. First one is 1375 and the second one is 6600. Put together is 7975. Goodwill. Then go for minority interest. <coughs> two companies, two minority interests. Minority interest in B and minority interest in C. Their share in share capital plus their share in reserves. Out of their share in reserves, Again, I'll have pre-acquisition reserve and post-acquisition reserve. Again, under post-acquisition reserve, I'll have general reserve and p and &L. This total will give me minority interest. Place the values. Share capital, each share is 100. In B, 25,000, 250 shares. 200 shares, 20,000. Now, reserves in B... In B, it is 2875, 350, 28,833. Pull up the total of minority. 52,700. That is a minority interest. Reserves for CBS. <coughs> Maintain two column reserve and PL. Reserves for CBS. Maintain two column reserve and PL. Start with A limited balances of reserve. What is the balance of reserve in A limited? 18,000 and 16,000. There's no adjustments, guys. Only add is share and post acquisition reserves.
add share in post acquisition reserves of B and C. I'm sorry, there's nothing in C. So only add share in post acquisition reserves of B. That's it. There's nothing in C. C limited, we already utilized everything. It's only B limited that A limited holds 1050 share and 1825 share. So this will be 19,050 and this will be 17,825. Once you are done with all these working notes, you can start solving for the balance sheet.
small tiny balance sheet guys consolidated balance sheet of head of a limited as on 31st december 2011 equity and liabilities shareholder funds share capital my equity share capital is 125000 next one is my reserves and surplus that's a good one so reserve and surplus only a reserve and pnl two reserves reserve is 19050 and pnl is 17825 then my minority minority interest is 52700 non current liabilities is there any non current liability in the balance sheet no only current liability that is creditors current liabilities creditors no intercompany owings you can directly cancel it creditors is 7000 plus 3000 total is 10000 intercompany owings automatically gets cancelled and you will have a cash in transit that will pick it up in the asset side assets non current assets under non current asset the first asset is fixed assets tangible fixed asset second one is intangible assets my only intangible asset is goodwill 7975 fixed assets are 28000 55000 and 37400 this will give me 65 plus 65 plus 55 124000 yeah yeah next current assets have stock debtors and cash in transit stock value 22000 plus 6000 28000 stock debtors oh yeah unrealized profit of 600 in this so 27400 debtors total it debtors is 26300 57800 67800 1000 rupees of cash in transit Thank you 224 224575 